What's good with it, Nation? I just wanted to pull up real quick and show some film on the defensive line up against the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 11. I know the score was 32-13, but there was a lot of good things to take away from that game. If you go ahead and look at the stats, you'll see that Joe Burrow had around 150 yards in passing, had one touchdown, and was about 20 for 29. He didn't have no crazy extravagant game. The run game, as far as Cincinnati Bengals, that definitely got going. That definitely got going. But I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of snaps of the defensive line and how they kind of disrupted Joe Burrow and got into the backfield. And on this first play right here, on this first play right here, you're going ahead and see from the end zone angle. Let's see if I can explain this. There we go. From the end zone angle. And we just get a nice little push right here. Yannick forces a fumble. Daniel Levitt picks up the ball and takes it back to the house. And right here, Daniel Levitt, bro, I don't know where you're going, brother, but there's all this open field. You have all these Raiders and nothing but field, and you're taking off back into the middle of the field. So I'm not sure exactly what he was doing there. Definitely caused havoc on this play. Let's go back and look. You see Jonathan Abram, who is out for the season, lined up right here at that zero, right in the middle, A-gap, whatever you want to say he's at based on this angle. And basically, he draws back. But you just get that pressure from the edge. You even get a chip, a chip from the running back, I believe, is who is mixing might be in. Oh, it's actually Piron. And Yannick's still able to get there. The offensive lineman goes way upfield, and Yannick is able to come back to the inside and cause that havoc on Joe Burrow. Levitt picks it up. And like I said, he could have just ran. Like, where are you going, brother? Just run. And he just... I don't know why he goes back in towards the – the I don't know. I don't know what happened here. This ends up going into a field goal. And probably in a separate breakdown, I'm going to go look into the uh, – pull up some offensive snaps because, bro, our offensive play calling this game was terrible. But here we are again, causing trouble for Burrow. And boom, a drop interception. And we've been dropping interceptions all season, man. Like, I don't know what it is about this team dropping interceptions – but, yo, we got to come up with these. We have to come up with these or something. We got to do something to create these turnovers because we're 32nd interceptions, and that's inexcusable. Here we come back to a similar defensive snap right here, and we're just getting pressure, man, just causing havoc on this dude. Let's go back and look again. But this time we have a double-A gap. We're showing Perriman on the left. We're showing Abram on the right. But we only send four. Only send four. You see you get the chip. From U, uh, Uzama, the tight end of the Bengals, you get a chip on Yannick, and he's still able to cause some pressure coming around the backside on Burrow's blind side, forces him to throw it away. But on this play, this play, man, so tough, so tough. It's third down. You cause trouble. You put your hands on him, and look at this referee right here. He threw a flag. Yes, this referee threw a flag for roughing the passer on Joe Burrow. Terrible, terrible call, man. Terrible call. I know that the scene cuts out, but trust me, he calls a penalty there. They end up getting the first down. Terrible call by the ref. Here we get a play action, and again, we get pressure on the man. Here he goes, try to scramble out. Big boy Hank, big bang Hank pushes him out. And this play right here, bro, this play right here, just coming off clean with a blitz from Corey Littleton, who Corey Littleton's, you know, Corey Littleton isn't in the game anymore, right? Diablo stole the man's spotlight, stole the man's starting position. But you'll see he'll come up here and blitz. 7-1 is anticipating the blitz. But because he's anticipating that, Crosby is able to run freely from that uh, from his rushing lane. And Burrow just didn't have that time. Just didn't have that time. Didn't have the extra protection. Didn't have a hot read. But here we go, putting on a clinic by Max Crosby. Yannick with the sack, but who sets it up in this play? Let's go back and take a look at this one, man. I want you all to go ahead and look at Max Crosby going up against 7-1 right tackle of the Cincinnati Bengals and puts on the spin cycle. Puts the spin cycle on that, man. That was so lethal. Let's go back and look at it one more time because it's just so beautiful. Boom. Inside outside let's go max crosby it wasn't a fumble he was down but we're gonna watch it one more time back to back plays from max crosby hitting him with that spin like that is so lethal turns into an incomplete pass 
turns into an incomplete pass. But that pressure, man, let's go ahead and take a look at it one more time. Oh, hoo -hoo. incomplete pass, Aaron throw from Joe Burrow. Uh, oh, accidentally skipped the back one more time. We could watch it again. Boom, spin cycle, hit him with it. Let's go ahead and watch this next play. And those two plays were back to back. Now, watch what they do. Watch what they do. They had to bring in an extra tight end to help block. But even then, even then, we're still able to get a sack. Still able to get a sack. And that's what's promising. That's what's promising. You see they hold the keep the tight end in here. One less receiver out there. You have the running back here. Ends up leaking out. But we still get that pressure. We still get that pressure from Unique. Crosby getting double team. Unique doesn't stop on the play. Solomon Thomas is in his face. Unique comes to clean it up. And those are plays that we can really build off of. Here we go. Pressure in Unique's face. Causing a, a air ball up in the air. And this right here, I just threw this one in. This is the last play. But I threw this one in because, man, these have to be interceptions. If the ball is going to be in the air like this, we have to make that pick. Casey Hayward, Merrick, they keep running into each other. And if y'all don't follow me on Instagram, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ready to Take. But I posted a little, a couple clips, and one included the Colts game to where this exact thing happened. It was Casey Hayward on the outside, Merrick coming from the middle of the field, and they run into each other. Instead of it being a turnover and interception against the Colts, it was a touchdown by T.Y. Hillen because the ball got batted in the air. And T.Y. Hillman ended up coming down with it. In this case, there was no receiver to receiver to catch the ball from the tip. But boom, we're running into each other instead of getting these interceptions. So I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure 100% what's going on with that. But I definitely think there is room for improvement. I definitely think there is um, things we could take away from that first Cincinnati game that we could definitely apply to this next one. We were getting pressure. The main thing I would say is we need to stop Joe Mixon. Joe Burrow, we did a good job, and we have to continue doing that in this next in this next game, but the Joe Mixon rushing yards accumulated were 132. He had a couple of touchdowns, I believe, and that, that well, that's just not going to cut it. That was the big biggest difference in this game compared to us. You know, Carr Burrow's numbers were nearly identical. Carr had some, a little bit more yards and threw an interception towards the end of the game, which kind of messed it up. And like I said, it was it was 16-13 with 11 uh with 10 minutes left, but the Bengals ended up scoring, made it 22 to 13. And uh after that, it just went downhill. But let me know what you guys think about this matchup coming up. What are you guys' points, what do you think we have to do to win this game? Um, I think the defensive line is gonna step up. They should have a good game. I hope they have a good game and do what they did last time. But we have to stop that run. We cannot afford Joe Mixon to run 132 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and just slicing us on those cutbacks. I'll probably have to do a breakdown on that with Joe Mixon. Um, but we've been defending the run a lot better. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. If y'all new here, appreciate everybody pulling up. Until next time, y'all ready to tape.